even that's now, scary. even now, the way things are even going, it's looking as if if care is not taken, Malcolm X might even his legacy might outlive that that of Martin Luther King if care is not taken. I'm telling you, mm. where things are going, mm. his legacy might outlive that of Martin Luther King in the long run. I'm telling you. Because go on, because why? Because because I feel that because of the reason, because of the, what he stood for, because of what he stood for, because all the things that Martin Luther King fought for, he fought for desegregation. Okay, schools have been desegregated now. But the situation of black people in America hasn't really significantly improved. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Said that black boy, black people should sit down, black boys and black girls sit down on, on, the, on the table of brotherhood. Okay, now they are sitting down at the table of brotherhood, or they, at least they are trying to sit down at the table of brotherhood. But that hasn't improved their lot significantly. It hasn't. They would have been better off under segregation because they had the skills, skills that they acquired after slavery had ended. These are people who had worked more than five, ten thousand hours on the plantation. <laughs> These people can literally go to any 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 plantation and work their butts off and create create things for themselves. The only thing that stunted their growth was that they were prevented from acquiring land, and they struggled to they were prevented from acquiring land. They struggled to get voting rights, and they struggled to get you know access to loans, bank things that would have made their life. You know, um, worth, you know, worthy. They struggled. Well, on 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 that note, um, because because now obviously we're talking about blue, blueprint for the um blueprint for black, black power. power, and obviously black empowerment has to do with um the collective. So. This is, brings us now, I was thinking of um, Haiti, I was thinking of the, the African Union and Haiti. Um, just to give a brief rundown, we know Haiti obviously was the first successful slave revolt in history. Um, and since then, they have suffered a lot of um, setbacks, um, a lot of um, uh, subversion from Western powers and also natural disasters. Haiti is a poor country, but still maintain the African essence. And in 2016, they applied to be members of the African Union and were rejected. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking, the reasons given were not very clear, but it's hard for me to understand a drive to pan-Africanism and the rejection of, of uh, Haiti being a member. They are an observer member. And this is what the Haitian Prime Minister at that time, Dr. Gary Cornell, said, that the African continent occupies a place increasingly important in the diplomatic action of the Haitian government. To this end, the process of participation of Haiti in the African Union was engaged with the president of the regional institution for the grant to Haiti of a status of associate member and of the accreditation of a diplomatic mission with that organization. So subsequently, um, they've been visiting, but they've only been still been granted an observer status. Um, I've been trying to figure out why they weren't granted. When we look at um, what we, I recently learned, which is a place called Melia, which is a province in Morocco. But it's a province of Morocco that is a province of Spain. So it's an enclave in Morocco that's a province of Spain. It has full status of the European Union. We know the UK has um, governance or, or ownership over the Falklands in Argentina. And various Caribbean islands are still under the protectorate status of the United Kingdom. So this is not like, and then we'll come, we'll, whenever we talk about China, that has still holds sway over Taiwan, uh, uh, Hong Kong, 
and uh, and some other smaller enclaves, and even the um, the Spratly Islands. So we can't say they're not granting Haiti status due to proximity. That 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 can be a reason. We can't say they don't have cultural shared values. We can't say we have no historical context that these people were Africans taken over there. We can't say that there's no legitimate reason being that um, even for an honorary reason that they were the first to successfully um, revolt against the French. Um, we know about <coughs> some of the terms and the success and how he trained um, um, and the, um, the Haitians to revolt and successfully beat them and it gave them a big smack in the, in the Napoleon and, 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 his, um, and his cohorts. So why? Why would they not give them status? Is this is this talk of Pan Africanism just talk, or is it, is, is it real, or is there something else going going on here? Well, I think we don't really know. We can only speculate. I was I just as you. I was shocked when I found out that their their membership to the African Union was put on hold. Um, I mean, I was looking forward to it. I saw that move as a step in the right direction. You know, the people who live in Haiti today historically have ancestral roots with Africa. You know, that's a fact. So it makes sense. It makes sense for them to be connected to their mother organization through this um, political slash economic um, union that we call the African Union. It makes sense. So, you know, being an associate member or being an observer member, I don't think, it, I think it's just enough. I don't, I, I think it's not enough. It's not enough. I beg your pardon. So I think that they, they should be given full membership, full membership. And I, and I, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't seem to understand why their membership was put on hold. Could, could their membership be put on hold because there were discussions around including a member state that was not geographically in Africa? Could their membership be put on hold by elements within the African Union that was opposed to Haiti's membership? We don't really know. But one thing we do know is this. Asians are as to, they are Africans. They are Africans that were forcefully taken from the continent to the Caribbean to work on plantations there for um, Spanish, for the Spanish and the French during um, the colonial era. So it makes sense for them to be connected to their to their to their to their mother body, to be connected to the continent of, of, of Africa through the African Union. That way, they can be able to have an expanded um, um, interactions, whether bilateral or economic, with members of the African, uh, African Union. So I want to believe that this, um, this temporal setback, it's something that the African Union will review in the future. We revisit in the future and make the appropriate step by in, by you know in, by in, inducting Haiti as a full member of the African Union. I, I, I feel first of all that there, there's a statute that I've just found out. It says um the statute is Article twenty nine point one of the African Union Constitution, which states. Only African states can join the African Union. Now that phrasing there, African states, is where the whole confusion has come about. Um, does an African state mean an expression of just geographical boundaries, or does it become more than that? And even if, even if you want to go by that rudimentary ex ex expl explanation, we've seen examples across the globe. I mean, even England is not connected to Europe. England is not connected to, the United Kingdom is not connected to Europe. So as I, as I gave example for Falklands is, is far away. The Haiti is too connected to Africa for them to even let this linger on. That was 2016. We're in 20, 
18 now, over two years. It's, it's, it's a shame and, and, and despicable what whoever is at, uh, at the helm of affairs to, to, to allow this to, to go on. It's, it's, it's despicable. I can't see any justifiable reason why Haiti will not be allowed. And, and I think, personally, I think there must be some sort of subversion because it's a test case. If Haiti gets inducted into the African Union, then it opens the door for all the Caribbean states, for all the other uh, mini islands around, for, um, for the Afro-Brazilians who number in the 90 millions to also um, seek some sort of alliance membership as well with African Union. And that is a destabilizing prospect for Western powers. And I think that's why the African Union is balking at some sort of intervention. Also, the African Union, oh, we know, has Northern, um, um, North Africa, which is predominantly Arab. And I don't know if for them to be able to induct them, there needs to be a vote that requires um, um, ascension from all parts of Africa, all regions of Africa. I wouldn't be surprised if that's how they reach the, the consensus. And if that's the case, then we need to think of something else. But, uh, and then even African-Americans, we haven't even talked about them. African-Americans having status in the African Union, having status. I mean, Haitians must be feeling dejected and, um, and, and turned away and discarded after all what they've been through. You would think the least, the least the African Union could do would be to, to grant them membership expediently. Expediently. I don't know, I, I sometimes I'm, I lose hope with the African Union that they, they've lost their way or they never had the intention of this sort of Pan Africanism ideology from the get go. Well, I again, I, 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 I'm just like yourself. I, I struggle, I struggle with that notion, and I don't, I don't seem to understand why uh, their membership, their full membership, be put, be put on hold. You know, from, 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 from my own standpoint, I'm thinking, could it be, you know, geographical, as I mentioned earlier on? Um, we know. Um, Malcolm X tried. I think he set up an organization called, is it Afro, the Afro-American? Um, Afro yes, so Organization of Afro-American Unity. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly, uh, Organization of Afro-American, and he was, uh, you know, he was attending, unit to the, uh, attending meetings on the continent of Africa with member nations, um, you know, in Cairo, in, you know, in other parts of Africa, during the days when the African Union was known as the OAU. I don't think that um, the, the American um, government was too happy with that because they saw that as a threat to national security. And I think there was, there was a memorandum um, that, was, um, um, that was developed by the then NSC. I believe it, it was either Kissinger or, or Brzezinski. Um, that, uh, and the memorandum was centered, centered around making sure that um, um, the American government does all it can to ensure that a disconnect exists between um, African Americans in America and Africans on the continent, as it, as it is tantamount to the interests of the United States. So, again, <clears throat> um, like you like you pointed out earlier on, if Haiti is given full membership, we might see, and um, there's a possibility that we can see. And an increase in an application for full membership from other countries in the Caribbean, Guyana, Jamaica, um, Saint Lucia, Saint Kitts, Trinidad and Tobago, all these countries that have significant um, black population and they can trace their ancestry to the African continent. Brazil, you know, uh, Colombia, 
Peru, and then there are loads of them, Mexico. Cuba. So, yeah, Cuba. There's loads of them, you know, that have significant um, African population. You could see an, um, a, a, a rise or a surge in the interest for membership on, on, uh, to join the continent. And I, I, like you pointed out, that might ruffle some feathers in different centers of powers around the world, not just the West, you know, because they, they wouldn't, essentially wouldn't understand um, what will be the political or economic implications of that. So could that also be another reason why Asian, Asian membership was put on hold? You know, we don't know, we don't know. All I, all I would advocate for is um, if members of the African Union are watching this broadcast, that they should do the needful and look into it. There is a strong case for Haiti to join the African Union. These are people who are Africans who were kidnapped, forcefully kidnapped against their will centuries ago and taken to that island to work. You know, they've been living since when they've been arrived on that, on that, on that tiny island. They've been living in the worst humanitarian uh, they've been placed in the worst humanitarian and uh, humanitarian situation. You know, these are people who, you know, have have struggled over the centuries. Shortly after the Asian Re Re Revolution, countries like France and the United States jointly put place an economic sanction on Haiti that prevented it a trade embargo on Haiti that prevented it from engaging with other countries for 60 years. I think we shouldn't forget that. So when we see Haiti in this current state, we should understand the roles that foreign countries have played to undermine its growth and development after this revolution. I mean, to some, the Haitians aspire, aspire to have their own revolution, just the same way the Americans and the, and, 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 and the French had their own revolution. We see no reason why they, could, they shouldn't aspire to have their own revolution. Obviously, Toussaint Louverture was, was motivated by the, uh, the American Revolution. And these were people who were living under, you know, on inhumane conditions, under slavery in, 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 in Haiti. And they were able to organize themselves. And like you pointed out, as you pointed out earlier, defeated the English, defeated the French, and gained their independence, only for them now to, to be isolated from the rest of the world. To be isolated from the rest of the world and placed, you know, and an economic sanction was placed on them that was to span between 50 to 60 years. As if that was not enough, the Americans later occupied Haiti in the, in the, in the early 20th century. We've not forgot these stories now. Yeah. You think that people out there, think people, people out there don't really know what happened in Haiti. We know what happened there in Haiti and how um, 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 baby dog Duvalier and other um, um, Washington puppets was in, were installed there to make sure that um, um, Haiti continues to remain under the orbit of the United States, under the with its, its infamous Wilsonian doctrine, Haiti continues to uh, remember because there were there were concerns during the Cold War that areas of that nature, especially countries within the Caribbean, could fall under the control of the Soviet Union after they had uh, quelled um, mini communist uprising in a few um, Caribbean slash. Um, uh, Caribbean countries. So there was this fear that um, countries in, um, in, in, in Caribbean states, like those ones that maintain significant um, uh, trade and economic links to the US could fall under the orbit of the Soviet Union. So what did the US do? They responded by placing brutal dictators like baby dog Duvalier in, in, in Haiti. So this is a country that has suffered you know, economic sanctions, trade embargoes, and still has um, uh, um, significant um, new colonial presence there. Uh, so we know, we know, we know the role that um, foreign powers had played to undermine and continue to undermine um, the growth and development there. But that's not uh, um, the, the issue that uh, one is uh, more. Uh, focus on at the moment. What I I would actually advocate for would be for the full membership of Haiti um, in the African Union. And, I, and I, again, like I said, if um, any member of the African Union watching any of these representatives watching this broadcast, they should please look into that um, 
that case again and see how they can uh, revisit the issue. Haiti deserves a place in the African Union. You know, they deserve a seat at the table. These are people who are Africans, historically, culturally, that were forcibly taken from the continent to the con place that we know as Haiti. And, and, and just to remind the African Union as well, the African Union was formed on, on, on uh, or, or, or forged um, through individuals such, such as Nkrumah, Leopold, Senghor, with Pan-African principles, Pan-African black principles at the time, including people like Marcus Garvey and uh, a guy from um, Martinique called Aim Césaire from Trinidad, Henry Sylvester Williams. These are people from the Caribbean. So the African Union has a, the formation of the African Union has a pan-Africanist origins at its prototype. And for the African Union to now say they are not African enough yet, or can't do it, or reject them, or allow them to be observers, it, it's a slap on their face. They have, they have, um, Israelis as observers in the African Union, and they put Haiti on the same footing as the Israelis. It's, it's a slap on the face. It's a real slap on the face. Don't they realize that when some people see this over time, they can easily turn their back and become subject to, to coercion or, 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 or subversion, and then turn their back and become enemies of, 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 of Africa if, if they proceed along this line for as long as they're proceeding. I mean, it, 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 makes, it makes no sense. It makes no sense, and it's, it's really sad. I, I, I truly feel that the, the African Union are, are, have neglected their duties. And then again, the African Union isn't, I mean, most of the sponsorship and, and, um, and, and financial um, contributions come from Western countries. So we can never be independent in our decision making. I think but that I could think, be another right, right, But I think that that's, that's one angle to it. That's one mm. angle to it. The angle, that's one angle to it that makes the, the union itself ineffective or makes it look like a toothless bulldog. But the main crux of the matter is that member states, member states do not pay their levies. That is another side of the old story that nobody seems to be talking about. Yes, the African Union is strongly with, 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 with funding. Yes, we acknowledge that. And we acknowledge the fact that, you know, because of this shortfall in funding, it creates a lacuna for foreign powers to exploit and begin to detect the agenda that it wants the Union to play. But the problem is that the member states do not pay their fair share. The African Union imposes a levy on each of the member states that will ensure that you know, each of the member states contributes a percentage of 0.2% to the funding of the union. 0.2%. But 0.2%. Oh, yes, 0.2% of their total budget. Just 0.2%. 0.2%. That is, that is grossly insignificant. But still, more than 30 members, more than 30 members of the African Union do not pay this 0.2%. So there's this lackluster, this is nonchalant that exists between the member states. That's more than like, half. I, more than half, exactly. It's on, their, it's, on, it's on the African Union website. Can, anybody can go there, can, can go there, can have a look. It's all there in black and white. Member states do not pay their, their, their fair share. How do you expect an organization to be effective when member states do not pay their fair share? And people complain about the African Union being ineffective, being a toothless bulldog. That is the main problem now. How can we build an army? How can we be a, a, a force to reckon with in the international, in the international stage when we struggle with funding? The, un, the building itself in Addis Ababa was built by the Chinese. That shows how poor things are in, in the state of in, 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 in the state of the affairs. So member states should do the should do the should do the needful. Only a handful of countries that fund the African Union, Nigeria, Libya, South Africa, and uh, I think Angola, or also Egypt. It's a handful of countries, you know, take, 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 take the bull by the horn and make sure that the organization just keeps, keeps running. But for how long? For how long should that continue? 
why should the member states pay their pay their levy? So this is another reason why. Not that the I, I don't think that the, the union itself will, will open itself for expectation by foreign powers, but because the people itself on in, in the members in the union created the avenue for that to happen. So, so does that mean we, sorry? Sorry, go on. If we want to see a strong African Union, we want to see an African Union that is on its feet, fighting for the cause of African and black people, you know, taking his taking the, the role, taking his role as, as, as a stakeholder in, in, in global affairs, you know, handling this issue concerning Haiti effectively, then we should make sure that the funding for the for the union is robust. But at the moment, this, the, fund, the, the organization is struggling with funding. It's struggling with funding. Only a handful of countries fund the African Union. Only a handful in a, in, in a union that has over 55 members. Papa. And, and to corroborate that, I went on the website and the diaspora division, um, also called ESO SOC or ESO COC, basically people who are supposed to deal with uh, issues affecting diaspora Africans around the world. The funding for that division is from some German um, arm of German government or institution. Exactly. For that division. Exactly. So the issues. He, he who pays the piper. He pays the tone. Recently, I uh, recently Germany, Germany worked some worked out some agreement with uh, some a few African countries in in East Africa on how they were going to deport how how they were going to create. Um, refugee camps in those countries to uh, and, and ensure that um, uh, African migrants that were trying to um, come into Europe were rounded up and deported in those regions. On those regions, these are the kind of these are the kind of things that you know we've opened ourselves for up for. You know, our in Africans, African, African, African youths that are restless, that are unemployed, that. Giving up on the continent, trying to flee the continent, are routinely arrested, detained, and flown back only for them to be uh, uh, deported into all these um, 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 refugee camps that are springing up across East Africa. I think one of them is located in Rwanda and a few other East African countries that the, the uh, countries like the uh, Germany or the EU are trying to. Uh, uh, um, um, sort out with uh, some African countries. So these are these are the things we're talking about. But if we had a strong and formidable African Union, an African Union where the member states pay their fair share, then I don't think we're going to have any you know, this kind of issue. So I won't actually, um, you know, blame the un uh, blame any foreign power for the exploitation of the of the union itself. I think. Uh, you know, Africans and uh, you know created that avenue for that to happen. If we do not want that to happen, then let's pay our fair share. A handful of countries cannot be funding an organization of fifty-five members. If those handful of countries now pull out, if South Africa stop funding the union, or Nigeria say, "Look, we have other things that we are doing, we can't continue to." Fund. What then happens to the union? What then happens to it? So these are the issues. Everybody likes to go to Addis Ababa and make speeches and turn up anytime there's anything significant going on there. Maybe Xi Jinping wants to address African leaders and there's money to be shared. Or the American or the EU uh, commissioner goes to Addis Ababa and he wants to address African leaders. Everybody turns up, turn up there because money, money, money may be shared. But these are the issues. But if we take the union seriously and fund it appropriately, I think the union will be very, very effective. But we're not doing that at the moment and that's where the problem lies. We're not doing that. Okay. On, on that point of, of African Union funding, the fact that less than half are actually paying their dues, does that mean that on a whole, really, no one really believes in the African Union? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But the fun, fun, fun fact is, if you want to make um, an organization effective, you have to be able to provide funding for it. Look at NATO. NATO was set up after the Second World War, after the West found that they were going to be involved or going to be engaged with um, the Soviet Union in this long, drawn-out war, they set up this North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which was essentially a, 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 a conglomeration of different countries that had a similar interest, and they funded it. 
they funded it and they struck and and they, and, they, and, they, and they made an alliance that if any of the member states was attacked and all the member states was going to be was attacked and they funded it although a significant push percentage of that funding came to from the united states but nevertheless all the member states contributed their own funding and i think that played a crucial role in checkmating the spread of communism in europe and other parts of the world so if we want to build a formidable organization then we must be able to fund it then everybody will be able to get it because but if you don't fund an organization it's going to make it ineffective and this is the perception that people have about the union outside within the continent and in the diaspora that the organization itself is largely seen as a toothless bulldog if not so issues concerning as we were discussing earlier concerning haiti would have been addressed effectively issues concerning resolving conflict on the continent would be addressed we wouldn't have to bring in u.n forces to to resolve issues in congo that we've seen you know we would have had african union forces being deployed there to resolve all these issues people would have been trained armed, giving all the necessary support, logistics, they able to quell any kind of uprising, including intelligence. You know? In the West, they have what they call five eyes. This is the, the intelligence network that Britain, Australia, uh, France, uh, the United Kingdom set up. The five eyes. Essentially, it's an organization that enables them to share intelligence amongst themselves. We don't have those kind of complicated and sophisticated, you know, security uh, network or architecture on the continent. This is what we need to be start to develop. But how we cannot develop all those kind of things if we do not fund our organizations. Hmm. I'm, 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 I've just been to the website and I'm, I've got it up on the screen. And it shows uh, consistently the planned, well, first of all, it shows that member states' contribution, as you said, um, has never really exceeded a certain um, threshold for the past uh, five years from 2011 to 2015. And then it shows a spike in planned um, partner funding from 2014. But then the actual is always significantly lower. So literally we're just running on on low, low fuel. Low fuel, so it looks like it's just lots of speeches Lots of great, grandiose plans, but toothless bulldog, as you said. The toothless tooth bulldog. You give, you give it money, it has power. Money is power. People who made those statements know what they, what they were saying. Money is power. If you don't have money, you don't have power. You're allowed to see that it's ineffective. It's an outbreak now. There is a disaster on the continent. What are we going to do? We're going to run to the United Nations, run to the WHO. We start running up and down, just like we have Ebola now in the Congo. Do we have the resources to checkmate the spread of Ebola in the Congo? This is what the union needs to be doing and have the resources to be able to combat it. Vaccines, provide vaccines to be able to checkmate the spread of, uh, of these kind of outbreaks. This outbreak will continue to increase as the continent becomes to, begins to become increasingly urbanized. Rural to urban migration will continue to increase. So we'll be seeing a lot of these outbreaks that we are seeing on the continent a bit more more rapidly and more often. So we, meet, we need to be a bit more proactive. I know that um, centers of disease control have been established in different regions across the continent, but that's not enough. Providing the funding, providing the training, providing logistics to enable the, next, the expertise and the experts in the field to respond accordingly is crucial to ensuring that the organization remains effective. So, that's why that's that's I think that's the cause of the issue. So, again, back to our, our original um, topic, the union needs to look at Haiti's membership. I think it was revisiting. The Haiti's membership is due for an upgrade. It shouldn't be seen as an observer. It shouldn't be given just an observer status. It needs to be given a seat at the table. Indeed, whether whether or not. It, it will be able to meet the demands of the 0.2% uh, immediately. Um, th th that could be another thing. You know, we're looking at all angles. That could be another angle. They're looking at, okay, we're going to get these people to join, but the administrative costs um, would not be able to be um, um, absorbed by them because they're a poorer country. And this, th this is not a matter of, of money. This is a matter of principle. 
is a matter of principle on all on all angles a matter of principle the rest needs to be dealt with in, 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 uh, at a later date it's a matter of principle uh, it reminds me of um uh, of, of the eu where i think it was greece who was trying to not greece um i think it was turkey and, and another country that were trying to join but they were looking at the financial ramifications but europe is a, it's a different kettle of fish it's a different kettle of fish because they have their main powerhouses in germany um in, in uk uh, and france before who, who could absorb um, a, a lot of the cost for all these things in nato and the rest and also we must mention in the eu they, they don't all pay their dues either in eu they, they don't all pay their dues but at the same time the countries that do i think they pay there are a lot more countries that do that than don't and they also um kind of absorb a lot of the costs that they pay for but obviously now during the economic downturn um that's be that's becoming a, a, a case for review and uh, with all the um nuclear programs also under review and the military so there could be an effect but for us as africans it's a, it's a case of principle case of principle that we must absorb the wider african union into our wider body expediently expediently and not to think about if they are able to meet the cost of payments of 0.2 percent or or larger as, as the case may be um they, they are doing this with themselves as the service and delaying the pan-african dream and 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 future by doing this because all we're doing is still working along the lines of the colonial project as we speak right now that's all we're doing we haven't even reached any mandate of what the african union was set up for we haven't even gotten close we haven't gotten close at all and all those people that fought for for the african union from Heli Selassie to Kwame Nkrumah to Gouture, uh, and the list goes on. It would be a shame if, if they could they could wake up today and see what was being what, what's being done. It'd be a shame. I think it's um I think this it's time for a, a review and a shake up of the African Union. I think there needs to be a there needs to be put a stop to foreign um, payments for upkeep and um, and maintenance of, of the union for any projects. I think we need to stop that. We need to be self-sufficient as a matter of urgency. We need to be self-sufficient because this is a decision that should have been taken 20 years ago, 20 years ago, and it's still being deliberated on. I, I, do, I really don't see, I really, I really can't see, except we know there are puppets, there are puppet leaders and puppet presidents around Africa, around Africa. So some of those who don't pay their dues need to be named and shamed. I'm sure that's part of it as well. They don't pay their dues because they don't believe um, they don't want a strong African Union and they want these other observers and other um, donors to constantly be donating